progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. A pleasant day to the whole class and the public. We, the Hestia, made this video presentation to encourage and convince you, our audience, to draw pledges or policies that will help mitigate problems and promote the benefits of our topic, catalytic converters. We do hope that everyone will stay tuned, so let us begin. There's no doubt the invention of automobiles made the world a more convenient place, but it also made it a more polluted one. When they run, automobiles speed out pollution that can blacken buildings and create poor air quality. Why engine makes pollution? Car engines run on diesel or gasoline, both of which are made from petroleum. Because gasoline contains about 150 different chemicals, including additives. It produces more than just power though. It produces pollution. pollution. Luckily, technology has come up with a solution. The catalytic converter. Catalytic converters change harmful substances in a car's exhaust gases such as carbon monoxide, nitric oxide, nitrogen dioxide, and hydrocarbons into less harmful substances like carbon dioxide and water vapor by means of chemical reaction. But what really is a catalytic converter? Catalytic converters are usually used with internal combustion engines fueled by either gasoline or diesel, including lean burn engines as well as kerosene heaters and stoves. But how does it work? Inside the converter, the gases flow through a dense honeycomb structure made from a ceramic and coated with a catalyst. The honeycomb structure means the gases touch a bigger area of catalyst at once, so they are converted more quickly and efficiently. Typically, there are two different catalysts in a catalytic converter. One of them tackles nitrogen oxide pollution using a chemical process called reduction or removing of oxygen. This breaks up nitrogen oxides into nitrogen and oxygen gases, which are harmless because they already exist in the air around us. The other catalyst works by an opposite chemical process called oxidation or adding of oxygen and turns carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide. Another oxidation reaction turns unburned hydrocarbons in the exhaust into carbon dioxide and water. In effect, three different chemical reactions are going on at the same time. That's why they are called three-way catalytic converters. Some less effective converters carry out only the second two oxidation reactions, so they're called two-way catalytic converters. After the catalyst has done its job, what emerges from the exhaust is, mo is mostly nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water in the form of steam. The easiest way to define oxidation and reduction in terms of oxygen transfer is by adding or removing oxygen to a compound. Oxidation and reduction with respect to oxygen transfer. Oxidation is the gain of oxygen and reduction is the loss of oxygen. While in oxidation and reduction with respect to hydrogen transfer, oxidation is the loss of hydrogen and reduction is the gain of hydrogen. This is exactly the opposite of oxygen transfer. A catalyst converter uses a reduction catalyst proposed of platinum and rhodium. A quick reminder that a catalyst is a substance added to speed up a chemical reaction without it being consumed. This reduction catalyst helps reduce nitrogen oxides by removing nitrogen atoms from nitrogen oxide molecules. This lets the free oxygen form oxygen gas. Then, the nitrogen atoms attached to the catalyst react with each other. This creates the nitrogen gas. Catalytic converters also use an oxidative catalyst composed of platinum or palladium. It helps reduce hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide. To start with, carbon monoxide and oxygen combine to form carbon dioxide. Then, unburned hydrocarbons and oxygen combine to form carbon dioxide and water. Modern catalytic converters also use oxygen sensors, which are sometimes called lambda sensors. They control how much ox extra oxygen gets pumped into the exhaust stream. Maintaining the correct amount of oxygen makes the reduction and oxidation reaction more efficient. Researchers are looking at whether gold can be used in catalytic converters. That might sound expensive, but gold is actually cheaper than many other noble metals. So how did he come up with a catalytic converter? Eugene Hudry studied mechanical engineering at the École des Arts at Metiers in Paris. He served in the French army as a lieutenant in the tank corps in World War I. 
the process revolutionized the production of gasoline and enabled refineries to produce twice as much highly high quality fuel per barrel of oil than the previous method. In 1930, Hudry moved to the United States where Vacuum Oil and the Sun Oil Company provided financial banking for his work and the Hudry Pre Process Corporation. During World War II, he returned briefly to France to adapt his cracking process to the production of high-octane aviation gasoline. Hudry also contributed to the war to the war effort by developing a single-step butane dehydrogenation process for producing synthetic rubber. After the war, Hudry formed a company called Oxycatalyst, and he returned his attention to the reduction of health risks from automobile and the industrial exhaust. His catalytic muffler patented in 1962. Let us now discuss how effective is a catalytic converter really is. Let's look at this chart. This chart shows the effectiveness of catalytic converters. Catalytic converters make a big difference to emissions with three-way converters giving a significant extra benefit over two-way converters. Figures show the pollutants in grams per kilometer at 80,000 kilometers. The blue bar represents the hydrocarbons emission while the orange bar is for the carbon monoxide and the yellow bar is for the nitrogen oxide. Catalytic converters are mainly designed to reduce immediate local air pollution or dirty air where you're driving, and this chart certainly seems to suggest that they're effective. Even so, people sometimes question whether they're really as green as they seem. It's important to remember that they reduce emissions rather than eliminate them completely. One issue of the catalytic converter is that they only really work at high temperatures, over 300 degrees Celsius or 600 degrees Fahrenheit or so when the engine has had a chance to warm up. Early types of catalytic converters typically took about 10 to 15 minutes to warm up, so they were completely ineffective for the first few kilometers or miles of a journey. Meanwhile, modern converters warm up in only 2 to 3 minutes. Even so, significant emissions can still occur during this time. Catalytic converters only become efficient at high operating temperatures. This chart shows the efficiency of a typical device at converting carbon monoxide at a range of different temperatures. Nitrogen oxides are converted with slightly higher efficiency and hydrocarbons with slightly less efficiency. At high temperatures, carbon monoxide is converted with the least efficiency of the three. As we can see, the efficiency of a three-way catalytic converter increases at around 150 to 200 degrees Celsius, while it is at its peak performance at around 350 degrees Celsius onwards. Some people believe catalytic converters make climate change worse because they turn carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide. But in fact, the carbon monoxide your car produces would eventually turn into carbon dioxide in the atmosphere all by itself. So a catalytic converter makes no difference on that score. It simply reduces the carbon monoxide the car pumps into the street as it drives along, improving the local air quality. The benefits and harms posed by the catalytic converter. Starting with the benefits, catalytic converter protects us from harmful gases. Catalytic converters are located in the exhaust systems of cars between the engine and the muffler. They use ceramics coated beads and various metals or the catalysts to convert unburned gas and nitrogen oxide into harmless gases. It decreases the atmospheric levels of lead particulate because catalytic converters do not work with leaded gasoline. And it decreases the hydrocarbon emission by 87% carbon monoxide by 85% and nitrous oxide by 62%. It also reduces consumption of fuel, so you don't have to pay too much for fuel. C continue on with the harm or disadvantages. They are very expensive to get or replace. And it increases the atmospheric of level of carbon monoxide because carbon monoxide is a product of the reaction that takes place inside the catalytic converter. That's all for this video. I hope you learned something from us. Thank you for watching.